Today is a sad day because such a great man like Sadat is dead. He is not great to me because he was a great politician or he was president, but he was a saint, he was a realized soul. I knew all about him. The attack of the negativity is on, but no more they will crucify a saint. this way and will not face the punishment. They will be punished now. All those who try to do such things will be punished because the new age has started. Today <coughs> I wanted to tell you about the Agya Chakra, about Jesus Christ who adorns this center of Agya Chakra, where you see the red marks. Behind that, inside, in the brain, on the crossing of the optic chiasma, is this subtle center, where this great deity is placed through his crucifixion and through his resurrection. He has created this space for us to enter into the kingdom of God, which is placed within us, it is not in without, is the limbic area that surrounds your ego and super ego. In the Puranas, in the ancient scriptures of India, Christ is described so very clearly. Actually, in the Bible, what they saw of him when he was on this earth was written down. But nothing what created him, how he came on this earth, what is the spirit of Christ, what is the seed of Christ, and how he came, and what is his purpose, and where does he stand within us. All these things are not described in the Bible. As I told you, the people at that time were not at all aware of his greatness of his special incarnation. But if you read some of these ancient books, you will find that he was called as Mahavishnu in the Devi Puran, in the Goddess Puran, is the ancient scripture of the Goddess. Mahavishnu was created immaculately. Now, when we say that Christ always pointed out this way, it is very significant. Actually, this, this means Vishuddhi Chakra and means also America. But this also means Vishuddhi Chakra stands for Sri Krishna, as I told you, and He is the primordial being, and He is the epitome of our evolution in the sense that he is the primordial being who is the father, who is the preserver. Now, in the Puranas he is described that his power was Radha, Radha. Sanskrit language is absolutely very scientific as far as, as, far as the divine laws are concerned. Ra means the energy, Dha means the one that sustains. Dharaiti Sadha Radha. She is the one who sustains the energy and she was his power. But in India, Krishna is never taken as Krishna Radha, but Radha Krishna. The energy is before the deity. The lady is before the gentleman, you can say. Radha Krishna. Now, this special happening took place long time back. This is at the stage of Vaikuntha, as we call it. At the stage where nothing existed as far as this world was concerned. At different stages it came up. We see the world in such a way 
that it was created in seven days, but actually these are seven stages in when this whole universe was created. And we are at the seventh stage, you can say. Now, at the first Vaikuntha stage, where it was all decided how to work it out, the creation of this great personality, of the son of God, the greatest of all, the Adhara, the support of the universe, this Mahavish. So, Radha, she is Mahalakshmi, she is the central part. First, she created him in the Vaikuntha stage. And at that stage, she decided that she created by herself this great incarnation and she created this Mahavishnu. I would like you to get the translation of the description of Mahavishnu and also the description of Ganesha, who is the spirit of Christ and who incarnated in this, on this earth as our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we have here an incarnation, a very special one, which was conceived thousands and thousands of years back at a level where it is only the activity of the God's mind was there, like Kuntha stage, where it was decided that this power called Radha will conceive in her heart. And she conceived him in her heart. And then he was made like an egg. See the symbolism of Easter, like an egg. Can you recognize it? People knew about it somehow. Why do we have Easter? Egg. We never think about it. He was created like an egg, out of which the half of it was kept as the seed, as Sri Ganesha, as the spirit. And the half of it was created as Jesus Christ. The whole egg was nothing, but the egg of this divine power, which has to manifest this divine power on this earth. This story is very beautiful how she created. And then he asked, who is my father? Radha is nobody else, but Mother Mary herself, she is Mahalakshmi. People may say that they can't believe in immaculate birth of Christ. They cannot believe in the conception of Christ. I mean, it's easy for people to say, we don't believe. What do they know about God? What do they know about his mysterious ways of doing it? Can you say how you convert or transform a flower into a fruit? You do not know anything about living miracles and you start doubting the immaculate conception. Here, when you got your realization, I conceived you in my heart and gave you realization through myself. Right? How did you get your realization? You never thought of it is an impossibility. Thousands of people are getting realization. How is it possible? There must be something special about me and about the way it is done. In the same way, she conceived and gave him the birth through her uterus. You can move it anywhere on your central system. And this great incarnation came on this earth with such a special purpose that he was nothing but pranava is the this integrated power 
this great power which has all the powers in it, the Ichcha Shakti, the Prana Shakti and the Dharma Shakti is the central path, all of these put together. He was nothing but energy, energy put into an egg because he had to do a very great job. So, this Radha herself, this Mahalakshmi, this Mother Mary conceived this child. And to name him after Krishna, who was the father. She called him Christ. Christ comes from the word. In Indian languages, we call him Christ. Krishna. Krishna means the one who has sown the seed. He is the father. He points out always to the father. But in the Puranas, it is described that Krishna said, you are higher than me. I will place you higher than me. He placed him, you can imagine that Christ is at this point and Krishna is at this point. <coughs> he placed him higher than him and he said, in anywhere people worship me, Sri Krishna said, automatically you are worshipped, you will be the support Adhara of the whole world. It is wonderful to say that about, I think, 14,000 years or 12,000 years back, Markandeya, such a great saint was born in India. And he has written the complete Ganesha Stotram, means the complete praise of the Ganesha. You can see the translation is so beautiful. And that he said, you will be so humble. He is the one who is the ninth incarnation called as Baudha, among the ten incarnations, that he will be so humble that he will wash the feet of his disciples. All the miracles of Christ are described in these books, but these books are not translated. And that he will be the one, when enlightened within you with the Kundalini, he will take away all your karmas and all your conditionings, because he will die for your sins, for your karmas. The world will not have to suffer anymore if he is awakened within. These are all the things already written thousands of years back, can you imagine? I wish the Christians who went from here to take, explain Christianity to Indians, told them that Mahavishnu is already born and we are preaching about him, the one who is going to suck your conditioning, the one who is going to suck all your problems of karmas. They never told. On the contrary, they were so stupid, I must tell you, that they would put a loaf in a, in a well and say that you all have become Christians because we have put the meat of the beef, uh, uh, the beef inside the well. In, Indians do not eat beef, you see. So, you have all become Christians. Villages after villages, they converted into Christianity. They started branding them as Christians. This was absurd. And that's why the people were waiting and waiting for the advent of Christ. His name Christ comes from the word Krishna, Christ. And the second one is Jesus. Krishna had a foster mother whom Radha loved very much. Her name was Yashoda. We also call her Jasoda. Christ is called also as Yesu in India. The short form of Jasoda is Yesu or Jesu. We have both the things. From there the name Jesus has come. She wanted to name 
her after the foster mother because she was a lady, so she was called as Jasoda, but for a man she selected the name Jesu and Jesu. Moreover, the word Jesu or Yesu is very important. J, J in Sanskrit language means every word has a meaning in Sanskrit, means to know, is to know the knowledge, jnana, jnana eti sa jnana, the one who knows. But J su, su means auspicious, su means that brings auspiciousness, that brings blessing. J su is the one who knows how to bring auspiciousness on this earth. People never told this, they never knew who went from here with the message that Christ has brought. At the time when Christ came on this earth, with this big message that somebody has to pass through this special problem. Now let us see why the problem was there. We have to understand the problem that faced human beings at that subtle level where they had to work out this a special, a very extraordinary incarnation. The problem was that human beings had raised their heads. By raising their heads, their ego and superego grew up around their limbic area, making it a very hard shell, just like an egg. A man developed his eyeness and only way to transform him into a bird, like an egg breaks up into a bird, was to make the Kundalini rise. But how to make that compact stuff where it is crossing, crossable, which can be crossed over, which can be passed through. So they had to create this special incarnation, which is nothing but pranavada, om, the logos as we call it, the sound of the all-pervading power to be put at a place where nothing but the power itself can remain, because anybody else, all other incarnations who came on this earth had all the five elements within them. But he was just the power, the energy, the complete energy. He did not have, for example, we all human beings are made of five elements on the right hand side as I told you and when we die, the part that is our body means one of the five koshas as they call the cocoons of the body which is the matter falls off. Then the water cocoon also falls off and the soul remains with the spirit on your head and the kundalini also there. But he was the only one who had no earth element in him. And so it was a very special type of an energy engulf engulfed into a human being was placed. Krishna had said about the eternal life and about the spirit. In Sanskrit language is very beautiful because it is a mantra. Nainam chidanti shastrani, nainam dahati pavak. Na chainam kleda yantyapo na sosayati maruta means it cannot be killed by anyone, the spirit cannot be killed. It is eternal, you cannot crush it, it cannot be flown out by any wind. And he had to prove it, and to prove that they had to have somebody here on this earth with that energy to come in with a body to act like a human being, live life like a human being and go through that drama of death to show that he overcomes the death. 
the resurrection is our message that he resurrects himself, he had to die and he had to be resurrected because he says that it is beyond death. Krishna has said that the spirit is beyond death and the spirit had to come on this earth. So, you understand when we talk of Christ how little we know as to how it's worked out. It's the most difficult thing that he did. And his mother was the Mahalakshmi, is the power, which is the central power of sustainment, pure sustainment, pure holiness, pure innocence. Such a powerful woman she is, very powerful. And himself is endowed, if you won't believe, with eleven powers of Rudra means of destruction, eleven powers of Rudra. He is Ekadasha Rudra, is described, all that is described. I am not telling it to you as my own. You can see it for yourself. He was endowed with eleven powers of destruction, but he was to go through all this with all the humility. When you have all these powers with you and when egoistical people behave like this, these donkeys, you see, who could not understand him, these brainless people in those days, who could not believe him, he could have destroyed all of them in one shot. Absolutely, he has got eleven rudras. You can imagine his destructive power with which he is going to come back. And he had to keep them in control. But he did not say about his mother much, because she was the power. And if he had said so, then they would have directed, these negative forces would have directed all their attention towards her. And then he would have used all these eleven powers and the whole drama would have been finished. So, he kept quiet on that. My father, as I told you, was a learned man and a very great soul. And we used to discuss about these things and I said, Martin Luther, who was a realized soul, when he started his new movement of Protestants, why did he not enhance the glory of the mother, as the Catholics knew, because Catholics just followed <coughs> after Christ, so it lingered on with them. My father told me that at that time Martin Luther faced three forces against him. First one was the Christians themselves, the Catholics, who believed in nunneries and all kinds of ritualism and all kinds of nonsense which he wanted to flout. Then he had another force which was facing and that one was the one that came from the Jews because they would not accept him. Even today they do not accept him, they are very adamant. And the third force that he had to face was the Islam, Islamic. And the Islam played down the role of a woman, though Fatima herself was the Holy Ghost, is the Mahakali power, the daughter of Muhammad. But he played it down just because the Islam had played it down, he thought gradually as Protestants will grow up, he will start introducing. the greatness of his mother. As it is, Jews even today are after the immaculate conception. In London very recently, I think about two years back, as they have money, they paid some of the newspapers and published something nonsensical about Christ. They said that it was predicted 
in the Bible that a child will be born to a girl, but it was not a virgin, the Hebrew word as it is, is for the girl and not a virgin. I said in those days we did not have girls of 80 years as we have today. <laughs> Even in India today if you say a girl a kanya means a virgin, kanya and virgin is the same means the Virgo. Modern times are funny. We cannot judge Christ's time according to modern times. Even you find a woman who is married, ten times they will call her a girl here. But one should logically understand this point. It is very logical. That if it was to be said that a prophecy means something special, that a child would be born to a girl, of course it is going to be born to a girl and not to a boy. And why was that girl born? It is going to be born to a woman. If it is a woman, it is nothing special. What is there to prophesize and say about it? It is so logical that when the word girl came in, it meant the virgin. All kinds of things they are talking, does not matter. First of all, they say that our we have to suffer till our Savior comes because Christ did not suffer for them. So, they are suffering. Now, we have to know that Christ has suffered for us absolutely to the brim. We do not have to suffer anymore, is a nonsensical idea coming from people who are sadistic. who have no joy in themselves, they cannot see you happy. And that is why also they make Christ look like a TB patient, I should say. I went to the Sistine Chapel and Michael Angelo was a realized soul, a great person. He has done complete justice to the image of Christ. So, big thing like a, we can say a Texas fellow, <laughs> <laughs> standing with a Lambodara, with a big stomach is described. Ganesha is Lambodara, standing there, throwing people right and left. Just see the words how he has spoken. He was not a cabbage like person. He was extremely dynamic. He was full of vigor. He was absolutely fearless. He had nothing to fear. And he is standing there and throwing people to the left and the right and the right ones is accepting them and putting them in the kingdom of heaven. Just imagine. It is Michelangelo is the only person who has really done justice to him and I would say Rubens because of his habits of painting the muscles. He's done a very beautiful painting I saw in his uh, place where he lived of the ascent and descent of Christ. <coughs> beautiful, one of the best that you can think. Nowhere misery written on his face. Such people do not feel the misery. They just watch the drama. They do not suffer. because of taking up your suffering, he took it upon himself and he showed to the world that now I ask forgiveness from my father. He stood as a representative of all the seekers of the world before his father who is a wrathful father. I told you Shri Krishna has a Samhara Shakti and worse than that is the witness God whom we call at Sadashiva. He is only there when he has to destroy. And he asked as your representative, O oh Father, please forgive them. He asked for forgiveness facing his own father 
as your representative that please forgive them. This is the greatest weapon he has given us to forgive. That is one thing none of the Christian nations are doing, is to forgive. But uh, people have not known the power of love. They do not. They talk. God is love. It's talk, 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 talk. If God is love, then love must be the most powerful thing. When I first started my work, I flouted all these fake gurus by name in India. And I told them what devils they have been and I have known them for ages. And people told me that they will shoot you this time. I said, let them start shooting, I will see who can shoot you. And always I have flouted them anywhere I get the chance. I have told that these are horrible people. As Christ has said, hot or cold, he does not mind. Because if it is cold, they are realized. If they are hot, then we will fight them. We can tell them off. But if they are lukewarm, you see, there are people. Oh, we are in different awareness, they are in different awareness, we must accept this awareness also, we must accept. Such people are the ones he said, I will spit them out of my mouth. So clear. He is the one who whipped people who were selling things in the temple. He is the one who said, do not throw pearls before the swine. So far I have never used this word, but he has. He was dynamic. He was not afraid of anyone. I, he could not bear the mediocrity and this kind of balancing. Oh, we can have them also, we can have the devils and also the gods. People asked him, why do you criticize them? They do not criticize you. He said, the devil, the satan is not going to speak against his own house. This is exactly what is happening today. I have seen when I say that this man, is a devil? People say, my mother, why do you call him a devil? Because he is a devil, I have to call him a devil. I am your mother. When I see a person suffering, he cannot get his realization because he went to this devil. I have to say, he is a devil whether you like it or not. If you are a true seeker, you stand up to that. And see for yourself, you are a true seeker. And if you are a true seeker, you must find your spirit and you must get to your realization. I am not here for any elections or pampering. I am here to give you your own, to have your own spirit, to enjoy your being. Even if the whole world gets against me, I am not bothered about it. I am here, of course, to look after you, to tell you in a proper way. But if it comes to the devil, I will be the one who will stand against them every minute. Whatever may they come in, whatever God, it is very easy to make them out once you get your realization. It is very easy to find out. He himself has said it, all these things. He said, do not judge anyone. Before realization, you cannot judge anyone from the appearances. They look very sweet, you know. Oh, they talk very sweetly. They come to you in a bag. And they will walk with such beautiful gait. They are great demetics. Some of them play flute, jump like Krishna. Some say we are incarnation of Christ. There was a gentleman <coughs> who said, I am the incarnation of Krishna. I told him, why do you make the lady nude and naked? What religion has taught you this to make the lady nude and naked, take out their clothes and make them dance. What is this? Oh, he said, I am Sri Krishna. I said, really? I never knew Krishna did that. He said, no, he did. Once Krishna was a small child of oh, four years, you can imagine, and not really little. What do they understand of nudity or they are innocent? And the gopis, you see, were having their bath in the river Jamuna, where Radha was putting her feet, so the water was all vibrating. And he climbed up onto a tree and they had put their clothes on a tree and he hid them. So, 
So, they were asking for his clothes, now what are you doing, why has he hit, it is a mischief, it is the fun, but in that fun what he was doing was to give them realization, because he could see their Kundalini at the back. As a child of four years, what does a child of four years know about nudity or dress or anything, innocent? Modern children may be very precocious, but not in those days. But when he was the king in Dwarika, I asked this nonsensical fellow who says he is a Bhagwan and a Sri Krishna. I said, when he was a grown up man and a king in Dwarika, which is at least 2000 miles away from Hastinapur, Delhi, and a lady called Draupadi who called him as a brother, was troubled because she was fond and all that, a big story of Mahabharata, you might be knowing Draupadi. And the devil of a man called Duryodhana said that I will make you nude, tries to pull her spouse. It is a beautiful description of the whole thing. He, she was worried that she will lose her chastity by removing her, this is called as archer. So, she put it in her mouth like this and she was to call Krishna, she says Kri and she was holding, because Shna means she calls her. And as soon as she found that, now the sari is going, she said Shna. And the description is so great. Vari kame shora bhayo, shora bhayo bhari, shankha chakra gada padma garuda lai sidhari. When she did that, the Shna, it echoed in Dwarika where he was ruling. He was the king there. And Shankha, Chakra, Gada, Padma, these are his four weapons, one better than the other. One is sufficient, the Chakra, I told you. All of them together on the Garuda, on the Kandor, he arrived there to save the chastity of his sister. If he was fond of removing the clothes of women, why did he all the way come to save that? And this fellow did not know how to answer it. I told him one day your clothes will be taken out like that. Within eight days it happened. Somebody took out all his clothes and was dancing on the street. And nowadays he's back in America with a paralyzed. He could not smell flowers. One better than the other, but his disciples, if you tell them, oh, do not say, mother, we love him. This kind of a funny mesmerism is stupidity. Awake he was there. This kind of emotional, nonsensical attachment to one person is not going to give you realization. You have to become your strength. You have to be actually reborn. There is no place for devilish people. If they are from hell, they will go back to that, but many of their disciples are also walking through. While they are my children, I would say, they are the children of God, they are the men of God as described as William Blake. They have been born on this earth for seeking because they know this is the time they are going to achieve their realization and these horrible people have mesmerized. At this time, should I go and garland them and say, you are very nice people? If you expect me to do that, then you have not understood me at all. No use telling me, oh, their awareness is different. I see that your Kundalini is ruined. You are out to get a blood cancer or some sort of a cancer or you are going to get into the lunatic asylum, something horrible is going to happen to you and when I see that, am I to say yes, the one who has done go and fall at his feet. But if there is a real guru, I would go and meet him myself. There are many, but they are hiding. I sent one fellow to New York, he ran away within two days, within two days. He said, oh, these New York people are different. He said, I have to take a circus with me. They like a circus. But Houston people are different. Now, so this was 
the great incarnation of Christ who came on this earth a very dynamic. Those who say that I am the Christ, there is many self-certified people, I am the Christ. Now the kind of a Christ they knew, he was never like that. He was a healthy man and he was not one of these people whose his cheeks have gone in child, who looks like a miserable, hungry, pitiable man. Any one of these who say that I am the Christ, ask them to walk on the water. Immediately, one foot up and one foot down. <laughs> ask them to walk on the water, if they can walk, it is all right. Supposing I say, I am the Holy Ghost, if I say so, there is a significance of that, that in the presence of Holy Ghost, the Kundalini rises. It is written down. There are thousand things written and every word has to be carried with that person, otherwise we just do not believe. Let them go and walk on the water not far away, from here 70 miles only, and see how far they go. It is the best way to judge these people. We have got a method to judge these people. Thank God we are born in modern times, when we are not ignorant. We have had Christ, we have had so many people, we can read and we can understand. We should logically reach the position to understand what do we have to expect from a realized soul. If he talks like a politician who wants to have votes, how can you believe that such a person could be an incarnation? <coughs> An incarnation has not only to be a fearless person, but has to be a holy person, not the one who is like a parasite living on other people, like these lamas. They lived like parasites in Nepal and also in Lhasa. Poor dissipators were suffering. They had no food, but these lamas were living and taking their uh, special emeralds, they call it, in golden cups. Today they are driven out, so they are on our head in India. We have to support these nonsensical people sitting down there as lamas, these parasites of the worst type. And those who could not get a place there are now moving about. And now they want to live uh, uh, on a marble flooring. They can't live on a uh, carpet flooring. They must have a marble flooring. And people have to starve themselves to create a marble flooring for these horrible parasites. Why should a saint ask for anything? A saint is a king. He is above all these comforts of life. He is not bothered. I mean, if you ask me, I can sleep on the street. I have no problem. No problem. Because I am above a want. I am above greed. I do not know what sort of a thing is temptation. If they call, them, call themselves as godly people, look at their faces, worn out, big city, serious, nonsensical people. They have no sense of humor of any kind. Not only, but I have seen some disciples who came to me, all their bone was broken, all their backbone was broken, every bone was broken by these people. They used to beat them, these sadists. They take money from you and finish your kundalini. Their days have come now. Because they talk well, do not believe them. What have they given you? Somebody says they have given us the knowledge. All right, what knowledge? What knowledge have they given you? Knowledge is all mental. What have you got it in your awareness where you have to evolve when you rise? Christ has described it so clearly, I did not say what a realized soul should be. You become a witness. You become a witness of the whole drama of the whole show. And this should happen to you, not only, but you are empowered with the powers of your spirit. At least your health should be all right. People are suffering from stresses and strain, 
having a headache all the time, jumping on their seat and they said we get very positive results. What are positive results? These make beliefs, if you carry on with them, you will have no way of judging as to where you are. First of all, get your realization, get to your discretion power and realize that it is you who can judge them after realization, not before. Christ has said right discretion, he has used the word right discretion. How do you get right discretion, discretion unless and until you are realized? And this is not to be self-certified. As Christ has said, you will be calling me Christ, Christ, I will not recognize. Meaning what? Those who say we are Christians, you see, going about with the label, we are Christians, we go to church, sing our hymns and come back home and quarrel, going to wars, fight. We are the people who drink on a Christmas day, on a Christmas day. We drink. Now, when Christ said that, they said that at the time of Christ, he went to a wedding and he blessed the wine. It's not true. That wine at that time never meant, even in India today, wine never means an alcohol. But Moses has talked about it very clearly and Abraham has talked about it because they had to deal with this void which I told you, the primordial master. They had to deal with the liver, so they talked about it. They called it the strong drink and fermented drink, so clear. But everything happens, if somebody dies, we must have champagne to celebrate his death perhaps. If Christ is born, we must have champagne. If Christ is born, that is the day we should dedicate ourselves to our spirit. Not to get out of your uh, awareness. Any one of these fermented things take you away from your attention. Your attention is in a way hypnotized. I do not say you do not drink at this stage, but after realization you will not. You will not, even if you want to. You will not drink because you get drunk. <laughs> like me. Uh, if I go to a party, you see, they will always say, please have something. Oh, you must have this. You have not tasted this. You better have. I said, no, sir, I am sorry. I am over drunk already. If I drink more, I do not know what will happen to me. I mean, you can't tell them you do not drink. You see, that would be absolutely unmannerly to tell them that please do not drink today. But they will go on forcing you and if you say anything against it, then absolutely you have no eliteness about you. You are absolutely unsophisticated. This is the thing. In this world, virtue has no meaning. If you are virtuous, you better hide yourself, not inside you. You enjoy your virtues inside you. You really enjoy yours and others' virtues. It's a very different thing as in the Unity Church, you call it a new age is coming. It's absolutely true. I find, as I told you, the principles of this church are very, very close. to that which is the stage onto which you have to jump. And that is why the right conclusion that is reached is absolutely the way to understand where you have to reach logically. <coughs> but you must know you have to take a stand. You cannot be a person who is apologetic. There is no place for apologies. If you are a realized soul, you are a realized soul. You are not dominating it by that to anyone. You are not dominating. By that, you accept your situation with glory and with pride. But I have seen many Sahaja Yogis also feel shy to accept that they realize. They understand what is happening. They are giggling 
They are laughing at the way people are. But they find it impossible to talk to them about their realization that others should get their realization. You have to take a stand in your family, in your surroundings, with your friends, and you have to tell them that you better all get realized. The reason for that is that the Christ who crucified himself is going to come back. With his eleven forces of destruction. And then he is not going to tell you anything, not going to ask you to take any realization, nor he is bothered whether you go to hell, he will just sort out. But those who have got realization will enter into the kingdom of God. You have to enter into the kingdom of God. Here, as I say, is the seventh chakra. I told you about the sixth chakra, which is adorned by Jesus Christ. And the mantra of the seventh chakra, sixth chakra is our Lord's prayer. That's the way you can solve both the things. But the Bija mantra is Ham Ksham. Ham Ksham. It means that when you are infested with negativity, with depression, with the attack of the superego, as shown here, then you have to say, I am. I am going to fight. If you go to a guru who makes you a negative person, who makes you feel very shy, who says you have all the ego and you are good for nothing, you must pay me more and pay me more, and you all the time say that, oh, must be something wrong with me, nothing wrong with this man. If there is self-pity and also there is guilt, then you have to say, I am not guilty. Then you have to say that I am my own guru, if you have left side problems. But if you have right side problems, then you have to say, I forgive, hamksham. These are the Bija mantras of these two, which you have got. Your symbol is of these two wings, is actually the Agya Chakra. It is just like that. Agya Chakra is just like that. But they call it the, what, Egyptian, what? No, it's not that. You see, this symbol has come to you from unconscious. It's the Agya Chakra. Is this it? Egyptians didn't know much about God, I must tell you. Of course, pyramid is, pyramid is. Pyramid is all vibrated. But the way they de were so much worried about their dead is horrifying. Imagine these bones buried in the one box of gold, then one box of silver, then one box of this, and all the ornaments kept with the dead. The dead is finished into bones, the ornaments are there. I have seen that in Egypt, mad people, I must say. It's sadder who would have brought it round. But let's see, something new will happen there in that country. Traditional countries have wisdom inbuilt wisdom and they go on improving because they have tried all these methods and they know where to go. He didn't talk of death. They learned it from the people, pharaohs and all that, who had all this kind of a funny mummies going round and keeping the dead in a silver box and as if the dead knows where it is in life. Christ has said many things which we do not pay attention to. One of them is about the dead. In every church, I, I was happy to know that in this church there is no symmetry. You walk into a symmetry if you have to go to a church. A lady who came from India, she said, everything seems to be upside down in England. I said, what? She said, I went to see a church. And all the dead were laid there under my feet. And I was holding my sari walking like this. I was thinking I was going to step. And the lady with me said, what? You should walk straight. She said, how can I? You see? These are dead here. It's like a symmetry. And she was walking carefully because they must be respected. You take your children to those churches. I mean, I don't know. You don't understand that God has talked about spirits in so clear 
ways. Of course, maybe it is not so much in the Bible, maybe. But he showed that the, he took out the spirit, he talked of spirits of so many people and put them in the pigs and uh, put them in the sea. All this is so clearly given, still just see the Christian nation. Today's newspaper was there one free newspaper. Witchcraft, devil's den, devil's angels, uh, this guru, that guru, uh, psychic, ESP, all kinds of spirits. Imagine, I mean in Indian picture you would not even find one advertisement like that. Maybe some of the gurus might try, but in India people know who is real and who is not. Most of them know. Why here I find all kinds of things which are negative, which has something to do with the spirits we are doing. It is against Christ. <coughs> Why should we bother ourselves about the spirits? Let them alone. Like somebody's father is haunting, somebody's mother is haunting. Now they have done so much for you, now forget them. Let them be born again to get their realization. Then you call somebody spirit here, somebody spirit from there. Some spiritualist goes into a funny gesture and you start believing that and asking about your future and this and that. It is all very superfluous and absolutely silly against your spirit. I have told you yesterday those people who indulge into this for seven generations, they suffer, seven generations. I am telling you from my experience. And those who go to them also suffer. Even the countries where this is practiced too much. If a child is born there, I know of a lady whose child was born in a country like that. And he had this agya protruding just like this. And when he saw me, he started screaming and shouting. He could not bear this. And today he is a different child, my son. He is a French child. He is a very different child. Absolutely. But he was so much and so many spirits in him, you cannot imagine. And she told me that she, she had a nurse who was from that country and perhaps she has done something to him. So, the source of this is already unlimited. You do not have to pay for it. You stand outside and you can get any one of them. It is very easy to catch on them. Very easy. For example, somebody asked me, how do you catch a spirit? I said, very simple. You put a light before you. Of course, you do not try all that trick. And make a hole in a black paper, little hole. And through the, that hole, you see the spirit. You see that light and you will get a spirit into you. You get any name which is commonly used and go on chanting that name you will get into a spirit. You start saying any absurd thing in the presence of God, in the presence of the picture <coughs> of God or of Christ. You insult or do anything, you get into it, it is the easiest thing to get a spirit in you. You start jumping too much, you get it. You start saying, whoo, you get it. You do any funny thing, you get them. They are all around. They are busy bodies. They want to use you for their purpose. They are very easily available. Why do you pay for them? You pay such a lot of amount just to get one of them on top of you. You have to be your master, I told you. You have to be in the way Christ was. It is only He has the power to raise the Kundalini of people like that, as you do now. He was created in that immaculate way in which you have been given realization in the same immaculate manner. So have your self-esteem. We are not going to become slave of these horrible, useless, 
sly, aggressive people who are hanging around just to trouble you because their ambitions are not fulfilled or they are sly or they are sadist or they are machinist and all that kind of thing. You are seekers of high quality. Rise up to yourself. This is the message of Christ to you. Because he resurrected himself. Did he dance or did he say hoo hoo ha? Huh? Even he was tempted by Satan and invited the Satan arrived there and invited. Nobody asked him to be there. He has fasted for you, so you do not fast. If you fast, you will get a fasting spirit in you. If you overdo your Hatha Yoga, you will get a spirit which will do much more Hatha Yoga till your ribs break down. Yeah, they will take you to extremes, you see. You see those mad people running, jogging on the road. They will get it very soon. <laughs> worried about them. You see, all these extra things there is no need to do. Today we saw one of the circus or some sort of thing that was there. Two or three people from somewhere, I think from Spain and all that. And the Vishuddhi was so badly catching in them, poor things were putting all the pressure, going like this, going like that. And they said they are statues, whatever it is. I said, I had simple pity for them. I said, what are they up to? I mean, you can have real statues like that. But why make human beings behave so funny, so extra energy uh, consumers? Why? Why? You are human beings. You are delicate things. Why do you want to stand on your head? Why do you want to do something that you are not supposed to do? You have to stay in the central part in a sensible way, in a very normal way to get your realization. Need not do anything that is extreme, always avoid the extreme. But you tell something to someone, it is impossible, human beings must start doing it. You give him a cycle, till he breaks his head, he will not give up his cycle. You give them the skate, till he completely is in an accident, he will not give up his skate. It is impossible to be with that. To be in the center is the easiest thing, just to be in the center, in the balance. Before going to the Sahasrara, I want to tell you about the balancing, because tomorrow I am going to tell you how the diseases are caused. So, the balance is, because if you use any one of these powers, for the first power is of superego through which we run away from places, we avoid, we are frightened, we have fear. The another is of aggression, the right hand side is the ego. Any one of them, if you use too much, the other one gets frozen. For example, a po person who thinks too much and plans too much and thinks that he is responsible for the whole world's affairs, you see, and he is doing all the work, while he does not do anything, God does everything. In the myth that he is, develops his ego to a great extent by which his left side suffers too much. And then, first thing he develops is all the problems of the left side in the organ. First of all, the poor Swadhisthana cannot look after the liver, so he develops a liver. Then, on the left hand side, it is absolutely useless, so he develops diabetes. Diabetes is not caused by sugar by any chance, I can tell you. Of course, you should not take too much sugar also. I mean, too much of everything is wrong, but you must take sugar. It is important for your liver to have your sugar there. But is an idea in the head of people that if you take sugar, you get diabetes, not at all. It is caused by overthinking, absolutely, not by sugar. In an Indian village, a farmer takes at least every day half a kilo of sugar for your information. And they do not know what diabetes is, because he does not think, he just does. <laughs> if you want to solve your problem of diabetes, you have to develop your thoughtless awareness, 
which you get when Christ is awakened within you. He thinks for you. You do not have to think. You just be in that silence, that bliss. And then Swadhisthana can look after the other side. Diabetes is absolutely curable through Sahaja. Then people who suffer from the troubles of the spleen, like anemia and all those things. But the worst of all is the blood cancer. Blood cancer is the worst thing you suffer from spleen. Now, how it is caused? A person who is very busy, you see, is big man, he has no time. So, he gets out of his bed, puts on his trousers, and he is there for the breakfast, standing, he is eating something. All right. Poor this spleen is trying to cope with that emergency, is trying to give some blood. Suddenly, he jumps into his car, he is driving. He goes and meets other who are on the way, have jammed his way. So, he is cursing them, doing all kinds of things. He is very speedy, you see, he must go. And he can't bear that jam. This speediness comes to you because this spleen becomes mad, it becomes crazy. It does not know how to cope with a madman like that. He has no time to sit down and eat. Formerly in India, the husband, of course, our system is rather different, which the Indi American women won't like, but we have been very successful with our men, you see. <laughs> it is a trick, I will tell you. The women must know cooking in India. They might be the richest of rich. They must know cooking. They know very good cooking, excellent. You know, you approach your man through his stomach, always is true, hundred percent. And then they make the husband sit down comfortably. In India, we sit on, I mean, we have a kind of a what you call the butler? Uh, we can say a stool which is very low, and the husband sits there, and another stool in front of him. And she sits there with a fan. She's fanning him. The rhythm of the food is with the fan. And she serves him, and she looks after him, and she talks to him very sweetly at that time when he eats his food. That's the sign of a Graha Lakshmi, of the, of the, what is it, the goddess of the family. She is very kind to him, and he likes those relaxed moments. She feeds him, then he gets up and dresses up and goes to his work. This kind of peace we should give to our husbands if you have to control them. <laughs> we have not to compete with them always. They are like children, I tell you. <laughs> They are so sweet. Somebody told me, Mother, you must go and describe yourself as the mother of women. I said, what? <laughs> yes, there are many women who are expecting a mother goddess to come. I said, but I am sorry. I am mother of men as well as of women. For me, both of them are just the same. Two chariots, the two wheels of a chariot, one is on the left, another in the right. It's great thing to be a woman, I must say. Like this Mother Earth, she bears us because she's so powerful. If you are a powerful person, you can bear it up. For example, husband has to get angry with you sometimes. If he gets angry with somebody in the office, he'll lose his job, he'll be fired. <laughs> but if he comes and gets angry with you, it's all right, doesn't matter, it's just fun. But a woman has to be that playful, <coughs> that cheerful, and that understanding should be in a woman. What is there to compete with that? You are the power, the potential. You have to give that power of love to your husband. In Sahaja Yoga, we have changed the entire system of society also. It is such a beautiful relationship between husband and wife. Such a beautiful one among children and parents, and it is so beautiful you can't understand. That age has to come. We are not to fight for any rights. We have every right. The woman has every right within herself. She doesn't know how to handle it. And they have gone crazy. They don't know what to do with these men. 
<laughs> it's very easy to handle them. You have to le learn the art of expressing your love. That's the thing we lack. <coughs> we should come from your heart to understand that we can't live without each other. This will stop many things that are going wrong in this country and the injustice we are doing to the children who are born to us. <coughs> now this is, I am saying, because Christ has blessed marriage. Those who believe in nunneries and all that are really nonsensical. And the nuns getting married to this innocent? I mean, how can innocents marry? This is the worst thing you can do to Christ, is to say that this nun is married to Christ. I just can't bear that. It's absurd. It's an insult of innocence. And this is what it is, we should understand, that marriage is blessed by him, is a sacred thing. We should not make a mess out of it. It's so beautiful. It's very beautiful. You enjoy each other. In company, also in separation, you do enjoy. If you know how to be sweet to each other, it's so beautiful. It's very beautiful. These traditions will come back as soon as you become the spirit. I'm sure of it. Now, so we come. I told you about the imbalances to a great extent. But later on tomorrow also I am going to tell you, because Sahaja Yogis have to look after their imbalances <coughs> to keep their health all right and to look after the health of other people also. Now about the tenth chakra, the last chakra as called the seventh chakra, seventh chakra, which is very important. This chakra has got all the seven centers in it. It is placed in the brain. The brain, if you have a transverse section of that, you can see it looks like a lotus leaves. It is said there are 1,000 nerves or 1,000 centers or plexuses for this particular center called as Sahasrar. Sahasrar means 1,000 petals. And these petals are shown there. Of course, they are not 1,000 there, but they look like living flames of different color. I will appear before you like tons of flames. It's said. Even the other centers look like tons of flames. It's the flames were enlightened, but the living flames and very silent. They are placed as a lotus. And as the Kundalini comes up, she pushes this lotus out and you touch the seat of the spirit, which is on top of your head, and you enter into the super consciousness, not into the collective subconscious or not into the collective supraconscious, but into the super consciousness where you become the master, you become the spirit, and you start feeling the all pervading power around you. And through your fontanelle bone area, you feel the cool breeze. You actually feel it. It's an actualization. It is not just that I baptized you, you are being baptized. It is not possible. On the contrary, I have seen some people who touch the fontanelle bone area of the children, introduce spirits. Yes. It should be done only by a realized soul and not by every dictum and habit. It's a very dangerous thing. Now, this Sahasrara has got all the seven centers. The seats of all the seven centers are there. Start from here is the Agya chakra. Here is the Vishuddhi. Then here is the heart. Now, see, it's so simple heart. If it is not heartfelt, if you have not felt it from your heart, because some people come from other gurus, I have seen them. They sit here just to mock or to laugh at it or make fun of it. 
they never get realization. If your heart is caught up with your ego, also it's difficult. If your heart is weak, maybe any problem with the heart, it can be anything, I mean. So, the realization here stops. Heart has to be strong. You have to have a heartfelt desire, that's the center here of the heart. So, I told you this is the center here of the Agya Chakra, Vishuddhi Chakra. This is the center, is the, is the, we can say a satellite of the Agya Chakra between the two, because here these two also come out a little bit, the Hatha, both of them come out here down below in Hamsa. But main chakra is this Agya and then there is the center of Vishuddhi. Then here is the center of heart. Now, behind here is the center of Muladhara, here, just in the center. For example, today I met a lady who told me she is losing her eyesight. It could be due to two things only. It could be due to diabetes or it could be due to some pulsation. You can lose your eyesight. Now, if it is in the center, it is a pulsation. But diabetes is caused by the Swadhisthana chakra around it. So, even if it is due to diabetes, it can constrict the optic lobe by which you can have problem on your eyesight. Your eyes will be open, but suddenly you can't see. This is absolutely curable, absolutely curable. Spirits, they get teeth. How much we have to be careful about spirits? That you will realize very soon, as soon as you will take to surgery. So, the center here of the Agya is caught up and when it is caught up, it just makes the optic lobe ineffective and you can't see, your eyes are open, you can't see. <coughs> and when this diabetes is set in this center around, which is the Swadhisthana chakra, gets affected. Vishuddhi chakra is here, is here, uh, I mean Nabi chakra is here. This is Nabi chakra, which has got left and right. So, all these centers are in the brain. So, the essence of Sahasrara is integration. You need complete integration. We cannot integrate nonsensical things together. Integration is only possible of the people who are of the same star or of the deities who stand for God. You cannot have satanic people and godly people integrated, can you? You cannot unite these people. You try it and you'll have problem. That's the best way you see the destruction of every unit. So, in Sanskrit is a very good, good word for integration, samagra, beautiful word, which means agra is the, agra is the hole in the needle. And when a thread passes through these needles, it passes through the agra. So, it is samak and this integration has to take place as soon as you cross over and because of this, you get your realization and you feel all the chakras are enlightened, unless and until you pass through the spontaneal area, you cannot feel the all pervading power, with awakening only with the awakening of the Kundalini, you can give realization even to people, you may think, but it won't stay there. But of course, you can cure people all right. But with realization, if you establish yourself, which I will tell you how to do it tomorrow, then you can give realizations to others, 
you can manifest all your powers, even you can control the element for your information. Yes, after some time. You have some people in India. There is an ordinary fisherman, again a fisherman. He is educated, he is a graduate, but he is a fisherman. His name is Harish Chand. He is a realized soul. He got his realization. He said, Mother, I never knew you have given me so many powers. I said, really? What happened? He said, I was going to a village across to another uh, island and the whole area was covered with clouds in such a way that a tempest was expected, absolutely a horrible. And people said, don't go out. He said, I was so much frustrated, I just stood up there and I said, now see, I am going for God's work. And will you please behave yourself till I come back? And he said, the clouds were removed, went there and came back when I reached my home in the night. That time it started raining and there were 25 people, other fishermen with him. In India, the work is taking up a big form among the villagers, among the people who are simple. You do not lag behind. Though they are simple people, they are good people, you are the leaders, you are great saints, you have been seeking for ages and now the time has come for you to get it, so do not miss it. For anybody's sake, do not plead for any gurus or anyone, you just plead for yourself. You have paid them, finish it off done your duty. It was a mistake. Forget it. Get your realization. Get to your spirit. This Sahasrara is opened out. Is opened out because of this. Sahaja Yoga has become a mass movement now. Thousands can get realization. Thousands. There have been thousands. 6,000 people, as he says, that's true, it is true, it is true, it has happened. It is so miraculous, but you are miraculous, you are great. Just to find out yourself what a great instrument you are, you will be amazed what things you can do. I can write a chapter like a book on Sahasrara, because that is my place, I know it so well, but today I think that is sufficient and later on, I hope, have you got the book? You might be able to get the books on this, maybe tomorrow and <coughs> then you might be able to read about it. But first get your realization because without realization if you read, you will again become a scholar, good for nothing. That is why we do not sell our books to people who are not realized, we just do not because they become scholars, you see. They start writing another book. I mean, people are so funny. <laughs> What's the use? Christ has said, now if you want gold, all right, have it. But be zealous. <laughs> I eat with those who enter into the kingdom of God. Take to the kingdom of God and do not worry about your intellectual feats. You have had enough of it. Take to it. May God bless you all. Now, today, if you have some questions, you may ask, but I think we should go in for the Yes, but if you have questions <coughs> and if you are not representing so anything, you then please ask. I don't want to talk to answer any question, but I have already told you about them and I do not want to hear anything about these horrible people. <laughs> you know, yesterday somebody argued about Yogananda and this little boy went to him and he said, oh God, he is seeming hot. The certificate is there. All right. If you have to ask questions, do not be aggressive and just get your realization. That's the main thing you should have. Yes. I'd like to ask my wife, not 
Could you speak up, please? Oh. The question is, is mother a vegetarian? No, not at all. <laughs> Say, supposing I was Kali once upon a time, I had to drink the blood of these horrible devils. How could I be a vegetarian? Krishna was not a vegetarian, Rama was not a vegetarian. Don't become vegetarians. I cannot save chickens. And I cannot give them realization. That doesn't mean that you all the time eat meat, meat, meat. Also doesn't mean all the time think of food. You see, I'm not bothered what I eat. If you ask me what I ate in the morning, I don't. There's no fuss about food. So I'm not a vegetarian. How could I be? Even Indians know that, that mother can't be a vegetarian. Krishna could not be because he had to kill so many people. And you should not be. By becoming vegetarian, you won't reach to God, I can tell you. On the contrary, you catch on the left Nabi if you become these horrible vegetarians like the Jains we have in India. Jains, have you heard about them? Jains? They try to save even the mosquitoes and the bugs. <laughs> now, I can't save, I can't do anything about mosquitoes and bugs. I mean, it has gone to that absurd limit, you know. Those who talked about it, you will read in the book, where Buddha and Mahavira, they couldn't bear the way people were stupid. So they were born again as Hassan and Hussein, the grandchildren of Muhammad Saab, and they fought, fought in Karbala to show that when it comes to fighting, you have to fight. So on were Christian soldiers. I don't say that, did I? No, I just want to know if you, you know, do you concentrate Do you on concentrate on anything when you give somebody a blessing? She's asking. Me, me. Mm. My machinery is too complicated. Don't try to understand. It's absolutely complicated. Just forget it. Concentrate nowhere. Just leave your attention like that. It works out. Do not concentrate. Do not put in any effort. Just leave it as it is. The Kundalini itself rises. If you concentrate, you might develop a squint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what about wives and mothers who work who don't? but who don't have to outside the home. I ask your societies like this, you see, the women, I don't know, they need not. I mean, your husbands are insufficiently enough. Really. There's no need. But the husband has a separate account, and the woman has a separate account, and she has to go to the hairdresser for what? Doesn't matter if you don't go to the hairdresser. Does it matter? I never go. I never be. And all these things, you have to take slimming diet, and you have to become like Ma Marlene Monroe, who committed suicide. <laughs> because of these norms, you know, we are too expensive people. So all right, you should be satisfied when you have small children, especially. You can look after your children. That's the greatest work you have to do. Then, when the children are grown up, you'll be amazed. I, who had such a great mission, got married my two daughters and then got out of it. Of course, in my young age, if I had come as a mother, nobody would have believed me. But still, that's very important. Looking after children is the most important work. Absolutely no doubt about it. But because in these countries who are developed, 
you do not understand the importance of that. The men also do not attach importance. They do not understand the importance of a wife and importance of a mother who is a mother in her child. And that's why the women, they find their ego so much challenged. In olden days, men used to go and cut the wood and the woman used to cook in the house. There was no uh, system of earning money. But now the man earns the money and the wife spends it. That's her job. And he can't bear it. He thinks, I'm earning and she's spending. You give my money to men to spend. Within half a month, it's all over. They don't know how to spend the money, no doubt. Men don't know anything. Whatever you may say, they really don't know how to spend money. They don't know where to go and buy proper things. I mean, really, it's true. We must accept that. <laughs> but the way we treat women in the way, I mean, in India, you'll be amazed. You see. I'm very bad at banks. I mean, I'm really hopeless. So, but, but you see, my husband tries to tell me how to sign a check. And he says, I don't know how your brain works. I mean, it's a complicated one. You know, I, I don't know how to sign a check, even today. And I don't know where he, what bank he operates. I really don't know. But we are supposed to be uh, what do you call that? Both yeah. of us are the members of the bank. What do you call that? Joint account. Joint account. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not bothered, you know. Whatever money I need, I ask him and I spend it. He never asked me accounts. Nothing is not bothered. He's not bothered. He's not bothered. Oh, he's very sweet, that way. He lives very well. We live very well. We have everything that we want. We are very happy people. What is in money and what is this we fight for? For what? You must enjoy your married life. If you decide on that, then a woman need not look like this, you see, like you must have a certain type of a wig, all right. So a man falls in love with that wig, not with you. <laughs> you change the wig, the love is finished. <laughs> the romance is finished. If you live with artificial attractions, it finishes off. Live with natural, innate, inner attractions. The security, the love, the attention. The children, same way. I mean, you know Indian children are extremely humble. My elder daughter is an architect, younger one, top the list. In the university, she is MA, and they are very obedient. My grandchildren are very obedient too. They like to obey. They like it. Uh, once uh, my younger daughter, she asked me, Mother, my friends all wear sleeveless blouses. Should I wear? I said, go ahead if you want to. She asked me, why don't you wear? I said, I don't want to expose my body. She said, then why should I? You should have told me. It's no criteria. If I ask, you should say yes to me. It's no criteria. If you don't want to expose your body, I don't want to expose mine too. Your own behavior and your own examples, you see, create that respect. You tell lies morning till evening. Children cannot respect you. It's very simple. Actually, to do all these wrong things, you have to go all out. But to do right things, you sit at home and do it. And the women are trying to change their husbands morning till evening. It's something absurd. I can't, I will never change my husband. I mean, I don't know. I have not met a better man than him. I don't see anything better in another man. I cannot see. If you love, you would not like to exchange your child. In the same way, your husband, you would not like to exchange. It's absurd. I mean, horrible. Somebody was telling me there's a lady, she's 65 year old and you find her a husband. I said, 65 year old? Oh God, how will she adjust to that man now? At, who is 70 year old and she's 65, they have never known each other. Better give up. Next life. <laughs> she should serve God. It's better now that she's free. <laughs> 
Yes, my child. What experiences can he expect to show that his self-realization has taken hold? Are you, have you come for the first time? No, he's, he's the man who came from TM. Oh, you... Now, I've told all this before, that you start feeling the all-pervading power through your chakras, which are manifested on your fingers, you become collectively conscious, you start feeling the chakras of another person, you start feeling your own chakras, you can raise the kundalini of another person, you can give realization to another person. There are so many more, but you become the master, you have the discretionary power, you can find out the absolute. For example, if you want to ask a question when you are realized soul, like a computer, if you ask a question, Mother, is there God? You ask it thrice and you'll get a tremendous flow of vibration. Now you ask about a certain guru who is no good, whom you have given lots of money, is he a realized soul? You might get even blisters on your hands. <laughs> yes. It's true. He meant more in his everyday life. What effects can he expect in his everyday life? First of all, your health improves. You become a healthy person. You become a better person. You start enjoying each other's life. You become detached from jealousies petty-mindedness. You do not become a recluse, but you become aware of your social responsibilities to others. You become a person who is balanced, who is wise, who doesn't have problems of stresses and strains and uh, problems of uh, feeling the uh, worries of the future, you live in the present. You enjoy every moment of your life. You see a beautiful thing, like a beautiful scene or a beautiful sky, you become silent, you become thoughtlessly aware, and the whole joy of that creation comes into you and you start feeling the pouring of that beautiful grace within. Emotionally, you become very balanced. You do not get into frantic traumas and horrible tempers and sudden outbursts of anger. One thing, if I tell you, won't believe that Krishna has said, Yoga Kshema Vaham Meham. When you get your yoga, when you get realized, then I look after your well-being, because the Lakshmi Chakra is the center, gets awakened. Even your material problems are solved. But you don't become Mr. Ford to have a headache, as I told you before. But your material problems get sorted out. All the angels and all the ganas, that is the Saint Michael's Abhi looks after you, and you see it. If there is one realized soul traveling by a train, there will never be an accident. And if an accident takes place, because they take place because of the negative forces, then everybody will be saved, because of one soul being. It's tremendous. You become so fantastic that you can't believe it. So your health improves, your tensions are removed, you become so knowledgeable, so knowledgeable, that people think you are scholars. You become the knowledge. 
Tomorrow I am going to tell you about the spirit. Before I tell you what is to be done, what is the spirit and what are the blessings of the spirit. And once you get that, then the source of joy is your spirit and you don't have to go anywhere out to seek it. This is on a very grosser level I have talked to you. But on a subtler level, you enjoy your peace, enjoy your virtue, enjoy your spirit and the whole life becomes a fun. is true. Not too many more questions, ah, Miss Harris. Then we haven't got time. Is there something? Yes, let's have yes. a couple more. What yes. is it? Yes, uh, if you <coughs> have you come today? Yes. For the first time. Then it's not proper. Ne? All right, you can write down your question and I'll answer. The thing is, those who have come for the first time, are asking the questions which I have already answered. So it's better that you write down the question and I'll answer them tomorrow, all right? You give it to me. <coughs> what else? Anyone else who's been before? When he was here earlier, and your hand or our hand was placed over his head or his hand and he felt it. You said he'd got it. Does that mean that he's got it for good? Not necessarily. <laughs> I must say, I told you there is transformation and transmutation. First the transformation takes place, no doubt. But even the transformation takes place, the transmutation has to take place. And that's how I said you have to understand the divine laws and you have to follow them up, which is very simple and it is for good. Some people have got it for good, no doubt. But this about, I would say, a month time is important and if you can really look after it, which I'll tell you tomorrow. For this one month, you have to depend on certain things that I tell you. Work it out and establish. And then it is permanently yours, because it is really yours. As I said, the butterfly comes out of the cocoon, but something sticks on, you see. So she has to, it has to, little bit, kick out these things. That's all. Now, who else? The nature of uh, possession, uh, the release of the spirit to her feelings has to take place in the spirit realm. In the case of possession, when the spirit is to be taken out, who has the capability of doing that? Every one of you. Realize. When you get realized, yeah, you can all do it. They run away. I mean, just they. they <laughs> if they know there's a realized soul, then just run away. <coughs> yes. We had three people <coughs> whom I had given realization, and they told me, Mother, we go on a bi motorbike in the night about say 11 o'clock from our work, and those spirits who used to come into these people and they used to talk. And they said, tell these three people not to go through that route because after 11 o'clock at least allow us to be there on the tree. Imagine, it's true. The spirits talk, really they talk. Every one of you is capable of doing exorcism, but don't get into it in the beginning, all right? First learn it. First become all right, yourself. Then it's very easy to do it. Very easy. They d they are afraid of light. If there is light, the darkness goes away automatically. 
But you be fully enlightened, first of all. That's very important. All right? I forgot to tell you that with realization you can do exorcism and also you can show people, even of the diseases like cancer. All right? What more do you want? Everything put together. Be careful you don't get the spirit. How? That's important not to get the spirit into yourself. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Should we have now the real life? Slip your shoes off if you've still got them on. Yes. And just undo anything that's tight oh, around you. <laughs> you're feeling very well. Just rest oh. your hands on your lap. Very well, too. Not good today? What's the matter? Nothing like that. All right, put your hands like this. Just be in a mood of wanting it. You're asking for something. This is the purpose of your hands in this position. Humbly ask for it. Yes, ask for you your realization. Nice, you can reduce. I feel just tight on the stomach. Anybody who's got a tight belt on, loosen it. Listen, loosen it. I mean, not very loose. Take your glasses off. Would be a good idea, yes. Yes, yes. Please take out your glasses. Be comfortable. You see, you have to be comfortable. Sit very comfortably. done already. Quite cool. Most of you have got it, I think. Just to feel it. In your hands, are you feeling the cool breeze? Today I have completed all the seven chakras. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Just see, today I have completed all the seven chakras. It should work out. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Hmm. Don't think, please don't think. Your body should not shake, your eyes should not shake. If they are, then please open your eyes. There should be no shaking or flickering of the eyelids.
I'll do all right now. What's happening? Better. All right? Good. Eyes are better now. It's good. Now put your right hand on your heart, please. <coughs> and ask the question, Mother, am I the spirit? In your heart, ask it tight. What is it doing, this fellow? Those who have been to Gurus, put the right hand on the left side of the stomach, left side of the so stomach, right hand on the left side of the stomach. I put the left hand towards me, to Gurus or to anyone who is unauthorized. Like this. The hand should be like this. And ask a question. Mother, am I my own guru? You ask it ten times. <coughs> huh. Now please ask ten times. Now put both the hands towards me, please. And I say, Mother, please make me my own guru. You have to ask for it. I cannot force it on you. It is within you. It is to be just awakened. The principle of guru is within you. Now please say, Mother, please give me my realization. You have to ask again, because it cannot be forced on you. Just ask. Say it at least three times. Put your neck straight, not to push it back, or just straight, not to push it down or push it back. Just close your eyes and say, Mother, please give me my realization. Should I use the pulley? Prana.